Hi guys, Mr. Shirelli back with part four and hopefully the last installment on uh, how to make a game in C-sharp. Let's review quickly what we did last lesson first. We talked about how to add a sound effect and there was two ways. You could add the Windows Media Player or you could do it internally. The Windows Media Player is better for uh, background music and for short bursts of sound you would go into the code and add the following lines. And very quickly, just to review those lines, at the very top first you'd have to add using system media and then you would use the word sound player, that's a class, and you would give names to all your little sound effects that you want to occur. In form load, you would actually load up all the different sounds and then activate them using uh, the load asynchronous technique. Then in the program, wherever you feel like you want to have a, a sound effect, you would add the word that you used for your sound dot play. The second way was, and I did this only in the start in my particular game, I had it play a little background music by using this .url. That is a link to the media player and then goes through there. All right, so this line right here basically points to whatever music you want to play. It's actually way shorter and easier than using the other one, but this one is better for background music. So it'll play throughout the whole uh, game, and then if you get interrupted, by some bullets shooting or whatever, it doesn't matter. It still keeps playing in the background. Okay, now let's talk about your final game, which is going to be a game where objects are dropping from the sky. You're either trying to avoid them or hit them. It's going to be up to you. And the example I'm going to load up is called Beach Balls Image Array Background. And we'll take a look at it. Now this is going to depend a lot on arrays because we're going to keep track of a bunch of different objects. And instead of having thousands of if statements, we want to be able to just have the computer cycle through a loop which is going to look at each of the objects that are stored in an array. Okay, so the basic game, I'm just going to draw a little image of it on the screen for you for a second. Basically, you're going to have these objects that are going to be dropping from the sky. Some are going to fall faster, some are going to fall slower, and you're going to be down here either trying to avoid them or hit them. Okay, that's the basic idea. Now these guys up here, how are you going to keep track of them? Well, if you had like 20 things falling, you'd need 20 if statements. We're going to loop through them so that we don't have to waste time uh, using a lot of different commands. All right, so that's the basic idea. Okay, so here's the code. Now, each one of those balls that are dropping from the sky, it's going to have a, a position an X position and a Y position. So those are going to be stored in an array. It's also going to have a, a speed that it's dropping at. So this is all the brand new stuff that I want to emphasize. Okay. The rest of it's pretty well the same as what we've been doing all, all along. You're going to need a background and a man and those objects that are dropping from the sky. Uh, they're going to have a bunch of different images. I'm going to drop about five different images from the sky. Okay. Also, uh, the man that's moving across the bottom of the screen is going to be in, a, in an image array also. All right. So when I load up the game, I'm going to load up the background image. I'm going to load up all the different signs that can be dropped from the sky. I'm going to load up the man. I'm going to store the man into the object. Okay. This is new. What I'm doing here is as I drop those images from the sky, I want to make them all sort of evenly spaced across the, the screen. All right. So what happens here is the first ball X, okay, number one, it's going to be at position X, which is 10. Then the next ball that I draw, what I'm going to do is its position X is going to be wherever this one was plus 20 more. So in terms of the ball size, I'm going to move over about 20 more so that they're evenly spaced across. This you can make up. You can make this whatever you want. So it could be a little bit more, a little bit less. You'll figure it out when you do your game. But I'm trying to space the positions of the balls across the screen. They're all going to be at the same height. It's just that how far across they're going to be is a little bit different. Ball size, if you're wondering, you know, where is that and where did it come from? The ball size what happens is in the game that up at the very top, we, we take a look at, I guess it's in form load. Uh, when we do the, the calculations, this is what I've worked out as the ball size. All right, now that you could say it's the exact size of, your, of the object you're working with, or you could work out some sort of formula.